As if it wasn't enough that these guys are creepy, they have venom and they can bite. And today I'm doing an experiment to see exactly how that venom affects the human body. I'm putting centipede venom into my blood. I got more of a reaction than I thought. Here on this channel, we get up close and personal with all kinds of crazy wildlife. And one of my favorite things to do is to actually unlock secrets of animals you can literally find in your backyard. One of the craziest secrets that a lot of us don't even think about is venom. Science is always finding out new things about venom. So many creatures have it that it really only gets done for creatures that are deadly. Most centipedes can't kill you, but that doesn't mean they don't have a painful bite. The centipede's mechanism for venom delivery is stored in a front pair of modified legs called maxillipeds. These formidable looking appendages act as the centipede's fangs, but since they're not actually mouth parts, a centipede bite is actually considered a sting. A sting from a centipede will itch like crazy, but why does this happen? It's mysteries like these that I'm working to solve by studying creepy crawlies like centipedes. Today, we're going to add centipede venom to my blood to find out why it is that centipede bites hurt like they do. But first, we need some venom. All right, now what I've got right here is a red bark centipede. What I'm about to do is I'm gonna take this guy out of this container and I'm going to induce a bite on another container so I can get some venom out of this animal. I'm going to be extracting the venom using state-of-the-art techniques. I have tweezers to hold the centipede and to make it angry, and I have a water bottle lid covered in plastic wrap. My goal is that I can entice the centipede to bite the water bottle lid covered in plastic wrap. He will leave venom residue on the outside that I can then scrape off and put into my blood. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a bite. He nailed it. I think there is venom in there. It's really hard to see. It's right in there where I have the film taped on. He actually nicked right in there. So here, here is the red blood. And I'm using the same exact needle. I'm gonna actually remove some of the venom. And we're going to brush the blood with the venom. Oh, you can see. It's like extra liquidy now. The blood was super, super runny. Let's see what it looks like under the microscope. Before I show you the reaction sample, this is healthy blood. You can see, as I move it around, you can see it's pretty free flowing. It's got a healthy red color to it. It's tough to see individual cells, but if you drag it sort of to the edge of the sample where the blood's a little bit thinner, you can actually see, yep, donut shaped red blood cells totally healthy totally normal this is what normal human blood looks like now i already know people are gonna head to the comments when i show you the reaction sample and say oh it's just coagulating it's just clotting whatever so this next sample is healthy but clotted or coagulated blood this one you can see it still has that red color it's a little bit duller but you can see how the cells are starting to like stack up. They're they're clumping together and almost stacking up. It looks almost like they're forming like little branch-like structures because the cells are actually being adhered together by different proteins and such. That's what we're seeing here. This this is healthy clotted blood, but this is not the venom reaction. I think uh, if you're ready, let's have a look at what happens when centipede venom is added to your blood. I want you to see if you're seeing what I'm seeing. I'm not gonna say what I'm observing yet. Just let me know in the comments down there. What's different? Here's healthy blood. Here's healthy coagulated blood. And now here is the sample with venom added. Do you see the difference? Well, the first thing I noticed is it's pink. Something different's going on here. That pink color is hemoglobin. That's the protein uh, red blood cells use to carry oxygen throughout your body. What I'm seeing right here is a whole lot of hemoglobin that is not where it's supposed to be, and that's inside your red blood cells. Look a little closer, you can even see there are some, some blood cells here, but they have like a funny shape. They're not, they're not quite as donut shaped as they're supposed to be, and they look awful clear. And what I'm seeing there is this venom is popping these red blood cells, and they're spilling their contents into that fluid within the sample, creating that pink 
pink effect. We, if we look around, it's happening all over the sample and, and even, oh wow, right here, it's even worse. Like you can see those cells have been absolutely, absolutely obliterated by this venom. This is the most dramatic reaction I have seen in my work with venomous invertebrates here in my literal backyard. Just like how centipede venom kind of dissolves the insides of insects and other invertebrates that these guys are actually eating in the wild, um, when they bite you, they're gonna have that same kind of cellular destructive effect on your body. And, and that's gonna happen to not just your blood cells, but also the skin cells and anything else that's directly affected by the venom. It's just easiest in this microscope slide to see the blood. And what's even crazier is this is just a garden variety uh, Eastern red centipede. This is about as small as it comes with your scolopendromorphs, the, the bark centipedes. If this amount of venom from this little centipede has this effect, I imagine that the giant scolopendras would have an absolutely insane effect. And this makes me uh, a little nervous because I've been up close and personal with giant scolopendras. I actually caught a giant Texas redheaded centipede down in Louisiana. If you wanna see that adventure, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until then, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.